All right, welcome back to another episode, Persuasion by the Pint. I'm Jonathan Taylor. I am Sean McCool. And this week we are, this is episode, what did we say? With, we're 18. 18, okay, because yep. I was a little confused at first because we did... Uh, we did a 17S, like an iPhone yeah. update type. <laughs> yeah, the mini. A little mini session, so yeah, that was good. But we won't count that as a full episode, so here we are today. We're going to be, uh, we're continuing on Breakthrough Advertising, Sean. Yes. But uh, you brought a special beverage. We'll get into that. Um, yeah, so I'm excited about today's, what we're going to cover in Breakthrough Advertising. It's something I think a lot of people, it could go either way. Yeah. Like, we're going to be kind of copy heavy today. Yeah. Um, headlines, some things like that. But I, I would stress, if you're not a copywriter, don't check out, because mm-hmm. this you know, no, yeah. these ideas could be used for Facebook posts. They could be used for Absolutely. ads. And I'm actually, I've actually brought some of my swipe files from yeah. B2B marketing that I've done using some of these ideas in trade journals. You could use them for trade shows. You could use them. There's a lot of different ways you could use these. So it's not just a copywriting That's thing. Any kind of um, sales professional, whether it's on over the phone. I mean, if you're in the profession of sales, and you don't use some form of uh, sales letter for your prospects, then you know you're missing out. You're, sure. you're certainly missing out. Yeah, so, LinkedIn, LinkedIn profiles. Yeah, absolutely. You know a lot of that kind of stuff. But before we get to that, I figured it's 2019 now. Yeah. That we're, you know, it's the first episode of 2019 absolutely. as we're recording this. So I figured I'd break out the big guns. <laughs> and I brought. Oh, a, you brought out the big guns for sure. Yeah. So I brought out the Macallan 18 year single malt yes. Scotch. So, uh, good stuff. I got my, um, go to carpenters cups. These yeah. are to kind of in honor of my Irish, Scotch Irish he- heritage. Yeah. And this is a Scotch, you know, Irish it's from Scotland. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. um, I'd be curious to see what you think about yeah. it. Now Cheers. I think what's cool about this is I wish that like beginning whiskey bourbon drinkers could drink this <laughs> because it's so smooth. I right. think. Right. That people that don't like whiskey and bourbon would like it, but at one hundred fifty, two hundred dollars a bottle, <laughs> it's probably not a good starter. Starter. Uh, yeah, scotch. not too many people work their way into starting off at a hundred fifty yeah, bucks. Yeah, so kind of got to work your way up to this. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I only I've had this bottle for four or five years, and okay. bring it out for special occasions, oh, and special people. So, cheers. what's what's a better occasion than this? This is it. So. Mm, man, that is smooth. Yeah. Very good. I'm more, you know, I love scotch. Um, I think I'm more of a Glen Livet. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, I like this better. Yeah, this is good. It's good stuff. It's not because it's a $150 bottle either. Yeah. <laughs> it's good. It's just a, you know, it's, so it's aged in, um, I think, ch- sherry oak okay. barrels. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, you can ha- you can certainly taste the. That oaky yeah. flavor. It's not like an overpowering oak. No, so it's, it's not. It's very kind of mellowed out. Some of them are real, like, I've had I've had some recently, not Glenlivet, but some, in trying out some others that are a little too, it's like a smoky oak. Yeah. Um, I think that second Japanese whiskey that I brought, yep. that was in the round mm-hmm. bottle, mm-hmm. that one was a little too smoky mm-hmm. for my yep. liking. Um, but this is, this is smooth. It's dark. It's got a very, like, caramel color if you're on, mm-hmm. on watching us on youtube you can kind of see it or on the website yeah it's definitely got a darker richer caramel color mm-hmm. than than uh maybe like a jack daniels mm-hmm. or jim beam or right. um any of the crown royal even it's <clears> just <throat> almost so like if a, you're almost new like to the a syrup it's yeah like it a, is it really is it seems it seems a little darker mm-hmm. i mean looking at the color um so if you're new to the podcast um Sean and I, we often have more than just a brew. We have, uh, we will also occasionally have a uh, scotch by the pint. A scotch, yeah, <laughs> yeah. A good scotch. Not by the pint on scotch. <clears throat> no, no, no. <clears throat> so yeah, every once in a while we'll switch it up and break out. So sure. Some of the older episodes we've done two or three other yep. whiskeys. Yep. Um, so we like to keep things moving. So yeah. Um, also, I brought. A- oh. You got to have a pairing with it, right? Yeah. So I saw these at Christmas. I actually got these, uh, went to world market, Mm -hmm. get some stocking stuffers for the kids. Oh yeah. Um, that's a great place to go. 
My uh, son's kind of a foodie, so he yeah. likes some stuff. And I saw these. Oh, this table right here is World Market. Is it? Yeah. So they don't these make the are, best furniture, but for my office, yes, it's perfect. So these are bourbon flavored <clears throat> salted caramels with black salt. So Interesting. Salt's black. Ah. So, so should we uh, should we sample them right now? I think so. Yeah. Might as well. Ooh, I love chocolate. You don't have to eat the whole thing, but no, just what? a bite. Hmm. <laughs> and we apologize if you're listening out there and. Yeah, listen to us too. You're happening to be on a, a New Year's diet or whatever. <laughs> Time to blow that resolution. I mean, it's, I think mm, we're. That was good. It's the fourth while we're recording this. So mm-hmm. Resolutions should be done by now. Absolutely. I mean, we're well past. You know, you gave it a good shot, mm-hmm. right? So. Well, you, like uh, any good copywriter or marketer, know that uh, those resolutions, people fall by the wayside shortly. I don't know what the average is, but. I think it's less it's than two to be weeks. expected. Yeah. Yeah. I think that actually, if you're in a very competitive market mm-hmm. and you sell something that's kind of a new year's resolution y type mm-hmm. product, oh. I think you could actually skip the new year's rush mm-hmm. and do a launch in February mm-hmm. with an angle about kind of like, um, you tried the other stuff. Yeah. Now let's do something that actually works. Mm-hmm. And I think that'd be a, I've always wanted to do that kind of that type of angle. And I've actually got a client I'm working with. Mm-hmm. Uh, who's also a friend that we're doing. We're probably going to launch in February with a okay. weight loss type. It's in the weight loss niche yeah. for women. So, um, so yeah. Chocolate is very good. Yeah, it's very good. So, so um, real quick too, I want to mention before we jump into our uh, our topic today or our chapters in um, our next chapters in breakthrough advertising. I do want to say to all of our listeners, thank you for those who have tuned in. Apparently, our audience is growing. Yeah. Our Alexa ranking has has uh, gone through the roof, or I guess if you're thinking in terms of it. <laughs> it's kind of like the thermostat dropping. at yeah. home. Do you turn it up or down? <laughs> if we're golfers, we're really happy because our score is, is going down. So, uh, But thank you. So that just means our, our traffic continues to grow. I mean, this site, we launched this site um persuasion by the pint back in middle of october end yeah. of october something like that so to see the uh you know we're down to under uh eight hundred thousand alexa rankings so in such a short time that's amazing that's pretty i mean and i've you know done podcasts a number of podcasts over the years and to see something like that happen with ours it just shows obviously there's an interest in mm-hmm. uh, what we do but we paired it with some entertaining um uh, aspects. We hope. hope. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. And, uh, you know, something that people enjoy a lot of people, not everyone, but a good beverage. So, um, so we'll continue to bring, uh, this kind of content to you each, each and every week. All right. So with that said, we are jumping into our next topic or our next chapter. And let me uh, pull up my notes, my notes. Yeah, so this is um, chapter four in the book Breakthrough Advertising by Eugene Schwartz. <clears throat> yes. Uh, you can get this through my buddy Brian Kurtz. Did we put a link up on that? Yet? We did. Okay. We did. So uh, it is in, if you missed the episode, you can go to the recommended books and is now, there's a link on that. You can uh, just click on that and order it off Amazon. Okay. Yeah, so this is a, just a great, man, if you, if you want to understand and, and master advertising. Yeah. And I could only, rec- if I could only recommend one book, this would be it. Mm-hmm. It's a little old. So some of the examples are a little, but as he talks about it, actually in the chapters we're going to do today, you shouldn't be copying headlines anyway. No. A lot of people do that. A lot of right. people will just take an old headline and substitute a word. And yeah. you know, that's, that's okay in some markets, Sure, but it's not the best way. It's, no. he, we'll talk about it, but he talks about three levels. That's like the lowest level. Mm-hmm of creativity when it comes to creating <clears throat> headlines. But what we are going to do is we're in the first chapter, chapter four, we're going to talk about the, t- the chapter title is 38 ways to strengthen your headline. Mm-hmm. Once you have your basic idea, or yeah. your big idea, as it's sometimes called kind of the hook. Yeah. So now you're going to start actually crafting that you've done the research. We've talked about, um, you know, the maturity of the market, the mat- the sophistication of the buyer. Sure. We've talked about all those things on the past episodes. Uh, we've, and now we're now we're actually getting down to writing. Yep. So that's where this comes in. Um, 
we're actually putting words, verbalization is what he calls it. Mm-hmm. Um, and the way you do that matters. Like yep. I, I actually used to have a name for my business. Um, it was called 2610 Advertising. Mm-hmm. And it was, I use that because there's only 26 letters and 10 numbers that you have to work with <laughs> in the English language. Oh, yeah. That's... <clears throat> and it's all about how you arrange them. Sure. Right? So I can take a dictionary that's got all the words in it. Mm-hmm. But if I just start reading at the front of the dictionary, it's not <laughs> going to convince anybody to buy anything. Nope. So it's all about how you arrange those words, mm-hmm. the pictures that are created from those words. Absolutely. And that's, that's what we're doing now that we're into the headline phase yep. is starting to create those. So before we get into the actual headlines, was there anything that jumped out to you about kind of his setup for that or? Uh, no, it's, you know, you talked about verbalization, the art of uh, increasing the impact of a headline. So, you know, just some things that I kind of highlighted, um, strengthen the claim. We've talked some about this um, last week. How can you strengthen the claim or enlarge upon it, measure it? You know, people, uh, if you can put um, some kind of numbers to your, you know, headline, it obviously builds trust. Yep. Um, if you can um, save somebody, and I, you know, I thought of examples um, back with some of my uh, manufacturing clients. I had um, years back. I had a manufacturing client in down in North Georgia, and one of the things that we did, they made um, something that's uh, about as boring as you can get in the manufa- you know, in the manufacturing world. But they would make it's basically a mineral, so they made it's nothing more than what you would consider, I guess you'd consider calcium carbonate. But what these, um, they sent a lot of these fillers and they were used in the carpet industry. And if you know anything about uh, that Dalton and Calhoun, Georgia area, it's a big carpet industry down there has been for years. So there's a lot of carpet manufacturers. Um, But these were nothing more than fillers. And so they were trying to get into um, the market of, um, you know, shower tubs, bathtub industry, um, which was a very competitive market, but they were trying to sell to these manufacturers. So we, you know, I worked with them for a time and and what we did was, you know, we looked at ways that we can, you know, what are some of the, the, you know, the, the hot points or some of the the pain points that uh, some of these manufacturers are having to deal with. And a lot of it at the time, this was back during the recession was like rising, um, increase in resin cost, you know, raw material costs are always going up. Right. So we put together one of the headlines that we did, and it's real simple, but we said, cut your resin cost by 50%. And the reason why we use 50% is that you could fill, uh, we determined that most bathtub manufacturers could fill, you know, they could easily fill their applications and outside of just bathtub manufacturers, which they were already filling, um, there are other manufacturers out there that could cut their resin by simply filling it by half, half of this filler so that they could take away a lot of the, you know, they're not using as much resin. Yeah. And so by that we were cutting their cost. And so using that right off the bat, you're think they're thinking, you know, they were automatically interested. It piqued their interest because resin costs were always going up because the price of petroleum was going up. So they're thinking, how are you going to cut my cost 50%? Well, they're not thinking of how, you know, in introducing this was reducing their cost. They're thinking of right off the bat, the price, but it right. got them to read further. It got their interest. So, but yeah. using those numbers and using measurable, you know, attributes in your, in your headline really, you know, garner some attention. Yeah. And that may, you know, if you're listening to this, that may sound like too simple. Yeah. But <clears throat> most people are not doing that. No, they're not even doing the simple <laughs> they're stuff, not. especially and, when you get into markets like that. Right. Right. You know, a lot of people, a lot of people listening to this podcast may be, you know, in kind of more into this. So Mm -hmm. you hear it a lot and you're kind of tuned into it, Yeah. but the majority of the marketplace are not uh, sophisticated, are not as advanced as we like to think they are, or that we're afraid they are. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you, you can at least put out a test Mm -hmm. that's just very basic, Mm -hmm. see what kind of feedback you get. And then if you need to tweak and things like that, um, you know, the, you know, I would have probably taken, I probably would have said 51% or 53% yeah, or something right. to make it more specific, but you know, I would have tried to do some type of test or right. something, find right. some research, which right. we'll talk about in a minute yep. that would really like give me a, 
a backed up stat mm -hmm. instead of just saying it, mm -hmm. you know, but nope. still it's better than not saying it. Yeah. Right. It's better than just saying, reduce your cost. Right. Cause that's yeah, what everybody that, says. Everybody says that. Yeah. We're the cheap, we're cheaper. Yep. Yeah. You know, that doesn't, but the truth is said, most manufacturers, they don't want cheaper. They want a yeah, better solution. Right. Not, and they're usually willing to pay for that. Right. So, and we didn't say what was interesting. We didn't say, you know, we didn't say re reduce. We said reduces, which mean, you know, in their mind, you know, using that said, okay, this is already working. Like somebody's already, and the product using itself yeah. is doing the work, yeah. not them yeah, having reduce, to do the work. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, they're there's not, a, they're not involved. You right. Know. When you, um, I can't remember the, the headline that there's an old classic headline that they actually did that test where they put an S on the verb mm -hmm. and it changed from the reader <laughs> right. doing the work yeah. to the product to doing the, product, the work yeah. and sales increased like three mm -hmm. or 400%. Yeah. I mean, it's crazy. So little things like that, sometimes yeah. one letter really can make a difference Absolutely. in these headlines and that's why you have to test. Yep. So one thing that jumped out to me and then we'll just jump into, I'd like to just go through the whole list mm -hmm. of these headlines. Yeah. I wrote down some others that came to mind as mm -hmm. I was going through it. But one thing he talked about is he said, um, once you make your basic claim, which could be as simple as like two words, right? Mm -hmm. um, like lose weight. Yeah. That, you know, that's a claim. Right. So then we're going to build around that basic mm -hmm. claim. And what he's, what he says is then you must reinforce that claim by binding other images to it mm -hmm. with the words in which you express it. So you want to create, you want to start using the other words around that lose weight idea to craft and create images yep. in people's mind. I was talking to somebody yesterday, um, about this idea. So she's in a, she's a very, um, she helps people with weight loss. Yep. And some of the stuff she does is kind of very technical. <clears throat> mm -hmm. It's not just like eat less, work out more. It's more, it's more the mindset and the emotional stuff behind. Changing, yeah. So it, it's more of kind of a, psychology approach as opposed right. to a, you know, effort approach. Right. So some of the terminology she used and things like that. And I was trying to kind of wordsmith some stuff with her and she would use very clinical words <laughs> and they were just kind of yeah. like nothing popped in my head. No right. pictures popped in my head. Right. So we had to really like, I had to break down and find out her process her mm -hmm. like, what is step one? And we had to create words yeah. that created word pictures yeah. in my brain mm -hmm. or the reader's brain yeah. so that people could say, Oh, that's what that means. Yeah. As opposed to some clinical term or definition. Right. And that's something in manufacturing you have to be careful yes. of industry jargon. Every industry has industry jargon. They, and, and they think it's assumed. Yeah. You know, you all, you'd never want to assume with your audience, but, yeah. um, but yeah, it's, um, that's good. I mean, you, so you mentioned, um, Measure the size. So we'll just go through these lists. Yeah. So you mentioned measure the size of the claim. Mm -hmm. um, like this one, he says, whoever heard of 17,000 blooms from a single <laughs> plant? That's an old yeah. gardening ad. Right. Um, measure the speed of a claim. Mm -hmm. Feel better fast. Yep. You know, um, lose seven pounds in seven days, right? Um, right Very now you specific, see a, yeah. Yeah, right now you see a lot of that with like the Weight Watchers ads. Yeah you know, lose 10 pounds in 10 days mm -hmm. or it's on us type thing. So it's a very specific, it, it's talking about, they're combining actually those two, like the size of the result and the speed of the result. Yeah. So a lot of these, you can combine mm -hmm. the ideas. Yeah. And as the market gets sophisticated, as the market gets more aware, you have to do that. Sure. Like you have to start combining <laughs> these things. Um, compare the claim. So six times wider washes. Mm. Um, Costs up to three hundred dollars less than many models of the of the lower of the low priced three. Mm -hmm. So that's comparing three brands probably. So yeah. I wrote one um, that's been around for decades, mm -hmm. and they still use it uh, from time to time. But Bounty, the quicker picker upper. Yeah, yeah. You know that's a tagline. Mm -hmm. It's a claim. Mm -hmm. It's it's comparing to everything else out there. Yeah. All in one nice neat. Right. And that's why it's been around for thirty years because yeah. like it just sums the quicker everything picker up. Upper. You know, they may put different characters with it, sure. but that's kind of their, sure. their thing for years. Yep. Um, this word always gets metaphorized. So create a <laughs> metaphor. Every time I read that word, it's just like, it doesn't want to, um, so he talks about melt away, ugly fat. Mm. I wrote an idea like ignite lead flow. Yeah. So ignite is like a picture of a fire bursting, mm -hmm. right? You want to get that word picture. Yeah. 
melts away ugly fast. Yeah. You can see the fat melting You can melting just see off. it dissolving away. Yeah. yeah, and I actually wrote dissolve stains because mm-hmm. that's one that yep. I don't know if it's Tide or whoever uses yeah. it. Right. But when they talk about the process, they say, yeah. you know, it dissolves stains. Yeah. You know, and, and you can see that, right? You, and literally they show you the time-lapse photography of it, the, of mm-hmm. the stain dissolving. Mm-hmm. Um, Vanishes pimples on, you know, you know, yeah. just think of all those, you know, pimple creams and things that, that sell like that, you know, vanishes. Pimples yeah. So if you or, were to, if you were to put a metaphor about how your product works or how your service works, yeah. um, and it's a, you know, it's gotta be a descriptive word. So let's say you're an accountant and you wanted to eliminate tax pain. Yeah. Right. So if you add the pain, eliminate tax pain kind of is a metaphor, yep. right? Cause it, you could think about, oh, okay. When I eliminate back pain by taking medicine, mm-hmm. I know how that feels. Yep. Right. Um, which actually leads us to like the fifth thing, sensitize the claim by making the prospect feel, smell, touch, see, or hear it. So I love these. Yeah. Tastes like you just picked it. Yeah. So fruit, you can picture just like picking right off an apple tree. Yeah. That that reminds me of like a Harry and David ad for pears Mm -hmm. or, um, I think one of the orange juice commercials uses some brands Mm -hmm. uses something like that. Florida naturals. Yeah. Those, Angry Orchard, you they they were running some um, some radio ads for a while there that was like apples, like you just like two apples right off a tree or go yeah. into every bottle. You know, you can just see, oh, okay, two fresh apples. You know, yeah. Can, and when you add word, when you add actual pictures to this, mm-hmm. because we're in such a media or yeah. video type culture right. and graphic culture, um, I know one of the orange juice companies, and this is where you have to be careful because. If you don't get specific enough, people can put these things on their product as easily as you do on mm-hmm. yours, right? Mm-hmm. So, um, but there's definitely one of the orange, they show the orange juice container filling up with real oranges and then yeah. the label appears over yeah. the top of them. So yeah. it's like, you know, real oranges. Yeah. Um, skin you love to touch. Mm, yeah. You know, so there's the different, per- there's the different types of, um, what are the different learning styles like kinetic? Mm-hmm. Phonetic, audible, audible, um, you know, some people hear better. Some yep. people need to actually touch yep. stuff. Mm-hmm. It's pro- probably a lot of people in your world, manufacturing world, were drawn to that world because they're kinetic yeah. learners and they, yep. they kind of want to touch the fabric or touch mm-hmm. the different pieces or they touch the machinery Absolutely. or that kind of stuff as they're talking yep. uh, to see that. So demonstrate the claim. So this one Demonstration, I think, is one of the most underused. Mm. Like the companies that use it, use it. Infomercials are the best. Late night infomercials, the 60 second, um, OxyClean, um, that, uh, that new, this, this rubber stuff that they're always spraying on like the bottom of the rowboat. And the guy's got a screen door in the bottom of the rowboat and sprays it with the rubber in a can, basically. Flex Seal or Flex Seal. Yeah, yeah Flex Seal. Yeah. Um, one of my favorites. And this is classic. Sixty, um, the Rolls Royce. Yes. At sixty miles an hour, the loudest noise in the Rolls Royce is the electric clock. I mean, that's been, that's a classic one that they use. David Ogilvy. Yep. Yeah. And you can just, I mean, you can just hear being that smooth. All you're hearing is the little clock on the inside on the which dash. doesn't make any noise. Right. Because it's electric. <laughs> exactly. It might be a little tiny. It's powerful wear. though. But you, but you've automatically, in your mind, you've created that whole scenario. Yeah. With a smooth, you know, a smooth ride, not a loud, you know, very little noise inside. Yep. Quiet. Yeah. Yeah. There's, um, <clears throat> the, um, there's a classic headline from uh, international living where he, he just talks about walking through your gardeners outside, mm-hmm. you know, to, you know, pruning your petunias, you're sitting here in yeah. a chair. Like this, right. it's this whole paragraph right. where he talk, he puts you in that experience of being in that moment. Mm-hmm. So he's demonstrating, like, if you got our, if you, if you got our information, <laughs> this could be your life, right? right. That's right. So it's kind of a, a demonstration. It's also the next one, which is dramatize the claim or yep. its result, you know? So, um, the classic, the biggest classic headline for that is they laughed when I sat down at the piano, yeah, but when right. I started to play, yep. And I actually knocked that off. Um, mm-hmm. I brought I brought some swipe files that I oh cool done over the years. Yeah. Um. So I actually knocked that one off. Even though we're going to say that you shouldn't necessarily knock it off, but 
I knew it had never been used in this industry. So I don't know if anybody can see that on We can Maybe we can YouTube. screenshot it and, and yeah. post it on the video this week. So I put, so this was for a, a B2B company mm -hmm. that sells saw blades and mm -hmm. some other yeah. stuff. And, and they sell to the people that make granite countertops. Sure. I think I've mentioned that before on, on the show. So mine was, they laughed when I said I could cut a sinkhole in four minutes, but when I did it in less than three. Yeah. And right. this was actually a live demonstration they did at a trade show right. that I built the ad off of uh -huh. the response they got from that demonstration. Right. So I took a real demonstration that actually happened, and then I used an old headline to make that work. And, it, right. and like, you know, and the reason that was so powerful is because for most people it takes seven mm -hmm. to ten minutes to mm -hmm. do that. So just saying you would cut it in half was a big deal. Yeah. And then when you end up doing it in less than three, absolutely, like it blew people's minds. Yep. So. That was one that we did. Um, and see, that's an example of pulling off from, not copying, but pulling off from some of the creativity of other headlines that have been yeah, famous. classic ones. And, yeah. And that's one that's probably been knocked off as much as any one. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. Um, in fact, I, I, I know somebody right now that's running a knockoff of that very successfully to sell out an event right now. Really? And it's, I mean, it's all, it's live online right now. Yeah. So, huh. um, so then we're moving on to uh, number eight was a paradox. Mm -hmm. um, John Carlton was really good at this kind of stuff. The one legged golfer, <laughs> you know, that can swing, you know, right. push the ball 300 yards or mm -hmm. whatever like that. That's a paradox. How a ball bald headed barber saved my hair. Mm -hmm. Like, well, how does a bald guy know how to save, <laughs> save your hair? So it's this paradox. Yeah. Beat the races by picking losers. Yeah. You know, pick the worst horse and you know. yeah it bit what it does is creates curiosity because your mind is thinking well something's incongruent there so i've got to figure out i've got to read more and yeah find and, out. and mark ford michael masterson uh, i think he goes by mark ford pretty much all the time now but he's a great copywriter <clears throat> author he talks about having um i'll see now i'm going to forget the name the term that he uses but there is first of all it sets up cognitive dissonance like mm -hmm. your brain doesn't know yeah. which which way to go with it <laughs> and what he says is you never want to allow somebody to create a categorical imperative is what he calls it another mm -hmm. big jargon word but basically mm -hmm. your brain is always sorting where to file something right and the quicker it can file it away the then it doesn't have to worry about it, it doesn't have to deal with it, it doesn't mm -hmm. have to burn calories trying to figure it out the longer you can put off in your ad mm -hmm. your brain figuring the reader's brain figuring out what it is you're talking right. about, then the more of the ad they'll read and the more likely they are to be sold. Mm -hmm. So these paradoxes set up this, this cognitive dissonance, this not knowing where to file it. Sure. And it forces you to have to read a little bit further. Yeah. And then the copy continues to build and, and brings people in. So I'll let you take number nine. Uh, number nine, remove limitations from the claim. Um, Example, um, you breathe no dusty odors when you do it with low white. Never heard of it. <laughs> <laughs> That's like an old detergent, I think, or something. Uh, but uh, shrink hemorrhoids without surgery, obviously. We talked about that. Um, I mentioned last week on, the, uh, on our last, one of our last episodes that I had a bariatric surgeon, and we would say we would use copies, sales copy for some, for some of his landing pages, um, for people that were suffering from diabetes and yeah. we would say we would use the headline something similar to um, and I would have to maybe I can pull it up as an example and do a screenshot but it was uh, like no more um, uh, you know uh, something like remove uh, never have to take insulin or you know, injections, the pain, you know, just letting them know the, the pain of having to uh, take insulin on a regular basis, yeah. never have to take another injection every day, um, be completely free, type 2 diabetes, you know, without all the, the mess, you know, from this one procedure. So, yeah, so this is like a real, so the key words here in the removing limitations are without. Yeah. So do so and so without. Right what they think they normally have to do. Right. Like lose weight without going to the gym. Yep. Lose weight without giving up your favorite foods. Yep. Um, and we use weight loss because it's such a competitive industry and it's, it's everybody understands it. Yeah. That's, that's an easy one because people are trying to, 
you know, get rid of that. Yeah. Even if is another phrase, you know, lose weight, even if you hate going to the gym. So there's this, so without, or even if, or great, right. great terms. Here's one. Let me, sh- let me read this one. This is one we did because I actually, here's one that I screenshot because this is another sub niche that we got into for, um, with some of his bariatric patients, because one of the problems is, uh, with obesity was infertility. So, uh, one of the most effective ways to overcome infertility and avoid the emotional roller coaster of expensive testing and medications. So, yeah. so um, eliminate testing, eliminate. Mm-hmm. So you're removing the limitation of having testing and having, right. you know, the other stuff. So yeah, yeah that's a good. One. So let's skip around a little bit. Okay. I don't, I don't think we got time to go through yeah. all 38 and they can pick up the book, but so here's one. Um, I'll, I'll jump to number 11, show how much work in detail the claim does. So, um, the one he has here is relieves congestion in all seven nasal passages instantly. Mm, Yeah. First of all, I didn't know there were seven nasal passages. (laughs) I didn't either. I thought it was two. Yeah. But, um, another great example from current Mm -hmm. medications is Pepto-Bismol, right? They go through the list, upset stomach, diarrhea, nausea, or whatever. Right. That whole list and NyQuil, coffee and aching, sticky, you know, that whole list of things that it covers. And that's like. People like can, you could probably go on the street and get at least half of those mm-hmm. things that they cover yeah. from just anybody on the street. Oh, yeah. yeah. Like, what's the NyQuil jingle? And people would be able to give you at least yeah. half, you know. Um, or you could do the, you know, the Big Mac, right? No. <laughs> <laughs> Two all beef patty special sauce. Right. Oh, yeah. The, 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 the whole thing. I get tongue tied on that one. Um <clears throat> I'll let you pick another one. Just... Uh, you know, I, I zeroed in on uh, exclusivity, uh, number yep. 17, when you can use, you know, we talked about this This powerful, it's a powerful part of persuasion is making somebody feel like they're involved in something that's exclusive that's not available anywhere else. So yep. ours alone, Persian uh, lamb originals. Um, uh, so, you know, if you can make them part of something that they can't get anywhere else, if you can use you know, something like that in your headline, then that's, that creates that, uh, image of, wow, I need to check this out because it's yeah. the only, it's only available here. So and you really have to know your market on that one. You have to yeah, know you that you're dealing with yep. people who want and right. value exclusivity. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, like, you know, if you're selling a exactly. 18 year scotch, right. there's certain people that will never buy that. Nope. And there's people like me who want yeah. the, yeah, they want it. Yep. Now I'm not going to buy the 5,000 bottle. Mm-hmm. Dollar bottle that they mm-hmm. have up at the up the liquor store, yeah, of a Macallan, but <laughs> that ain't never gonna happen. Um, I don't need to be that exclusive, but I do like a little exclusive. Too, yeah, yeah, you know? sure. There's a certain level that you want to be able to say, you know what? Not everybody can get this. So, yeah, it's or like, no, not you know, everybody wants to get it. You know, but uh, it's but, like the uh, you know your Jeep outside the yeah. Cherokee. It's, it's got a little bit exclusive package yeah. as it does my yep. my truck. You know. Yep. Added a couple things, changed yep. the wheels to make right. it a little bit more oh, yeah. special and unique. Absolutely. So, um, so, yeah, another one I had was number 20. Um, so, condense the claim. So, mm-hmm. interchange your product and the product it replaces. Yep. So, this is um, one they had is like pour yourself mm-hmm. a new engine. So, like <laughs> an engine that additive, right? So, mm-hmm. um, I think one of the transmission, there's a transmission um, additive that does something like that. I don't okay. know if it's Lucas Oil or somebody else. Yeah. Where you you know, pour yourself a new tra- mm-hmm. a new transmission. I had WD forty. I think at one time, if I remember, they had like wrench in a can. Yeah, where it would help you loosen. Wrench you know. in a can. Yeah, sounds pretty easy. You know, um, and then you could also use this to like. I was thinking about this. You could use this to to kind of bash a product, like a, <laughs> yeah. another oh, product. Yeah. So I was reading through a um, keto website about keto dieting, mm-hmm. and they called beer liquid bread mm. so they're saying you know bread is bad sure and beer is like liquid bread right is, is how they phrased it right to try to get people to see that because you know it's basically wheat and barley yeah, and course. oats and all that stuff so you could use that to kind of just take a jab mm-hmm. at your competition sure. or a, a strongly held belief right or something like that um your pick uh let's see um how about warn the reader about possible pitfalls if he doesn't use, you know, using that fear? Yeah. 
Don't FOMO in, is what we'd call it these yep, days, right? Yep. Fear of missing out or. Uh, don't invest one cent of your hard earned money until you check this guide. Yeah. Um, you know, those things people, it, it, it builds um, curiosity and they want to find out, you know, what am I missing out? Uh, and I think I want to wait until I invest anymore until I found out what, what I could be missing. Um, we used to do like, uh, the things, the seven things you need to know before taking action, doing X, Y, Z, hiring your next, you know, yeah. and, and fill in the blank, you know, hiring your next or visiting your next chiropractor, hiring your next pest control guy. Yep. The seven, uh, deadly things or the seven things that you need to know, uh, before you do that. So people yeah. are saying, okay, well, I'm curious enough to know that before I take any action, I probably should at least skim this over and look at yeah, it. Yeah, make sure I'm not already screwing right. up. You know, that's that's kind of what you're tapping into. Yeah. Like the the famous headline, do you make these mistakes in yeah. English? You know, right. That was like nobody yep. cares now if right. they're making mistakes exactly. in English, but back then I guess they did. Mm -hmm. I'm going to jump back to um, 21. It says, symbolize the claim, replace the direct statement or measurement of a claim with a parallel reality. Mm. So his example was start next Tuesday. Starting next Tuesday, the Atlantic Ocean becomes only one-fifth as long. <laughs> right. So that was probably going from boats to planes sure. or something like that. I don't, right. I don't know exactly what that's referred to. So I have an ad that I did um, that I brought. Oh, And cool. it's called, I'll hold it up there. Probably got a glare or something. <laughs> we'll put it on the website. But yep. So mine was how to turn $40 into 400 over and over and over again on nearly every countertop install, mm. even in this economy. So I used a couple, but I did the even if thing, yeah. you know, even in this economy. Right. I did... Um, and what I did is I took, so when, when people do countertops and that they have an overhang, like a counter, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you usually have to put those big corbels, you know, the big fancy pieces, chunks of wood that hold the counter up. Okay. That's one way people do it. Those things are super expensive. Mm -hmm. They don't match the cabinets. They're hard to install and they don't actually support much. Right. So my client had, had come up with a bracket, a steel bracket that is mm -hmm. invisible that you just kind of put and it cantilevers through the. Um, cabinet mm -hmm. underneath the, the countertop. Sure. And they're like, instead of spending $150 per corbel, you would spend $10 for these brackets. Wow. And instead of that being a lost item mm -hmm. or a break even item, yeah. it now becomes a profit center because people could actually sell bigger countertops Interesting. because it would hold a longer, heavier span. Ah, okay. Um, so we talk in the ad, and we'll get into this a couple more episodes from now, but in the ad, we, we told we told that story about mm. you'll be able to sell more countertop space. You're spending less money. So you'll be able to turn $400 or $40 into 400. Mm. Okay. And we can kind of tell that story, huh. but you know, the big in the, that's cool. In the big blue, it's how to turn $40 into 400. Right. So it's like, okay, yeah. that's interesting. You know, tell me more. Cause that's a, you know, that's Grant Cardone would be proud. That's 10 Oh X. yeah. Yeah. 10 X right there. <laughs> <laughs> now was that, was that in a, um, uh, some kind of trade journal or a, just yeah, a letter this was in out? their flyer that they did, the oh, distributor okay, cool. did, yeah. um, their own trade awesome. journal that they had. Um, another one was like they sold, they sold sinks and they had a good cost sink. So it was mm -hmm. add $200 pure profit to every job. Mm, nice. So I, I, what I did is I put profit onto the sink. This yeah. sink equals profit. Right. So I, you know, you, yeah. you kind of, you say that without saying it. Right. I'd say, and it adds pure profit to every job, huh. right? So they could be buying a Kohler sink. This was the exact same gauge steel, yeah. exact same shapes as Kohler sinks, but it's a different, it's like the generic brand. Yeah. And you can add $200 profit to every Absolutely. job. Absolutely. So, you know, huh. stuff like that. That's cool. Um, this one I like, it's number 33, address the people who can't buy your product. Mm. So it's, the example here is if, you, if you've already taken your vacation, don't read this. It'll break your heart. <laughs> well, now, right, if I'm thinking yeah. about a vacation, yeah, yeah. I'm like, I got to read that. Right. It's kind of like the old, um, the classic, what, never to eat on an airplane. Right. You know, that's a classic right. ad from, I can't remember who, who wrote that. Yep. One of the big guys at Boardroom. I think that was a Boardroom ad. Mm -hmm. um, there's a couple more left if you want to grab one. Uh, I like the 37 present or challenge, uh, the prospects present limiting beliefs. Um, you are tw twice as smart as you think. Yeah. 
Um, there's an, I mean, you can use example after example doing that, uh, challenging somebody's belief system. Um, that kind of, you know, goes with that previous ad where you, things don't, things don't add up. So it builds curiosity. So you want to read further. Yeah. A good example of that is, um, there's a lot of products in like Sky Mall magazine. Yeah. If you're flying, mm -hmm. you know, one that I remember that's been in a lot of magazines was that, that super weird looking like exercise machine that says mm -hmm. you can exercise in four minutes a day. Yeah. yeah. Have you seen that? You remember? No, that? I haven't. It's like a really weird, uh -huh. it's not like a total gym. It's like this high, it's like a $14,000 piece of equipment, Right. but it replaces all these other pieces. It's one machine and it works in four minutes a day, four minutes. And wow. it's got a whole ad that goes with it. And it's like, so it's like this big, like belief, like you can get the best <laughs> shape of your life in four minutes a day. Yeah. It's like, Wait a minute now. <laughs> it's almost so hard to, it's so hard to believe that you have to read it type yeah. thing, you know? So then we'll finish up with this one. Um, number 38, turn the claim into a question and answer. And I've got another one, mm -hmm. another example here. Okay. That I pulled. Um, so this one is, can this funny looking tool with a strange name erase a thousand dollar mistake mm -hmm. in less than 30 minutes? So, and then, that, and it's literally a Q and A. Cool. So it says. It's um, a question. People have to. There's a question up here, and, and I go ahead and answer it for mm -hmm. them. Yes, after years of testing, we finally mm -hmm. found a way to erase the costly mistake of scratched granite slabs in your shop. Because that was a big pain point. Yeah. Like somebody gouges a you know right. piece of granite. Right. You can't use that. And because of the way they cut them, yeah. like that's, that slab may cost mm -hmm. the shop owner $2,000. And if they can't get the right cuts out of it, it's dead. So it, yeah. They've lost that much they money. They can get remnants out of it right. at best. So. If you can erase that, it saves them fifteen hundred to you know thousand dollars or mm -hmm. whatever. You know, so um, that's so you answer the question in the copy, but people, you know, it's an interesting point that when you use questions in a headline, yeah, people are prone to uh, they want to answer a question in their mind. You know, you, you, it's almost like you got to. I think some people answer the ask the question, yeah, but they don't go ahead and answer it. Right. So another famous ad, Ted Nicholas had. Mm -hmm is um you a millionaire speaker yeah or something like that are you a millionaire mm -hmm. writer i think he actually did a whole series of, of those ads um and then he says yes right after it <laughs> he just goes ahead and answers it right and then you're like okay how <laughs> like okay yeah uh, and it's then you want to find out more yeah it sounds how too how how did you become that yeah, yeah. so um i did another one here we'll put yeah. up some of these on the website yeah as, these are great examples as uh examples and Kind of an obscure little niche. Yeah. So I mean, you can you can make this stuff work mm -hmm. just about anywhere. Do we have time to go into chapter five, or do we want to do five I, and six let's together? I tell you what, let's wrap up here, and then we'll uh, we'll just move into five on our next one. All right. Five and six. So on five, we're going to talk about or five and six. They're both kind of short. Mm -hmm. Do the old tease thing. We're going to talk about the three levels of creativity. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to talk a little bit about. Um, where you find some of these stories and how to come up with your, to really start fine tuning your headlines and where they come from, Absolutely. where they actually come from. Yep. Um, and then chapter six, I love the title of this. What <laughs> makes people read, want, and believe? Yeah. It's a super short chapter, but there's three things that you have to understand. Three things, yeah. Um, it's literally like a four page chapter but it's got a lot of yeah. meat in it. So we'll do five and six. On we'll the next give you a hint. It starts episode. with desire. <laughs> yeah. We've talked about it before. <laughs> yeah. And it's important enough to repeat. Absolutely. It adds a little dimension to it too. So. Well, cool. Great show. Thanks for listening, everyone. Again, persuasion by the Uh, thanks for listening. You can find us on all of uh, your social media platforms. Give us a five star rating. And uh, if you have questions, uh, visit our contact page, send us questions. We're always, uh, open to answering questions or having topics that you guys might suggest on our uh, on our show. So thanks for listening. Sean, great drink, man. Cheers. Cheers.